Hey viewers, Salman Safi is welcoming you in your own channel, Safi Mixed. I would like to begin from where I left in the second video, that is part 2 on Schrodinger wave equation. And for the sake of ease of references, I would like to rewrite equation 6, equation 7 and equation 8, which are these equations. Now the operators present in equation 6 has another very peculiar property that is they both constitute eigenvalues equation. That is if we apply these operators to the wave function like this and carries the necessary mathematical steps we can write the operator E applied to the wave function is in fact equal to the number E times the wave function. And similarly, applying the operator p to the wave function and carrying the necessary mathematical steps that you see on the board, we can write the operator p applied to the wave function produces the number p times the wave function. So far, the result we obtain including the ones in the previous video are quite satisfactory and very physical for massless particles are photons. What if we apply equation A to material particles, that is, the particle having rest mass. For such particle, the energy and momentum are linked via the rest mass energy in the form of this equation, which is relativistic energy momentum equation. The corresponding operators for this form of the energy can be written into this form, that is, the operator E squared operator p times c whole square plus m naught c squared the whole squared the last term is just a number it carries no operator applying this to the wave equation we can simply write it in this form that is we multiplied to each term the wave function psi and using equation 7 this can be put into the form minus is bar square partial square root of partial t square applied to the wave function equals minus h bar square c square partial square root of partial x square applied to the wave function plus m naught c square whole square applied to the wave function. Rearranging this equation it can further be put into this one form. This is a correct relativistic wave equation for massive particles. However, the probabilistic interpretation of this equation leads to a conceptual difficulty. That is, it result in the negative energy of the particles. This negative energy now has its interpretation in the form of klein garden equation as the energy of antiparticles, but in the Schrodinger time, it was a problem and Schrodinger quit working with this equation anymore. He then turned his attention to non-relativistic particles. For non-relativistic non particles, the energy and momentum are linked to the equation E equals P squared divided by 2M as we know from the Newtonian mechanics. And transforming this equation into the operator form can be rewritten like E operator equals P operator squared divided by 2M. Applying this to the wave function, it takes the form E operators applied to the wave function equals P operator squared divided by 2M applied to the wave function. Now, using equation 6, this can be put into the form iota h bar partial psi over partial t equals minus h bar square divided by 2m partial square psi divided by partial x square. This is the time dependent Schrodinger equation describing the dynamics of a free particle. Why a free particle? Because we derive this for the energy of a free particle, the energy without having the potential energy. Now note this, and as we will see in the application of this equation that this equation that is equation 10 along with its solution gives the quantum mechanical analog of Newton's first law of motion. Second, it is a linear wave equation and supports interference effect. 
these interfering effect in fact allow us to construct a localized wave packet solutions for locating the particles this equation can easily be generalized to a bond particle that is the particles acted upon by a force derivable from a potential energy function in the form of vxt in that case the operator form of the total energy becomes the E operator equals the square of the P operators divided by 2m plus the, foot, the potential function V of x in T. With this substitution, the Schrodinger equation modifies and can be expressed in this form. That is, we just add the last term V of x T applied to the wave function psi. Equation 7 is the time dependence to danger wave equation for bound particles or interacting particles. This is the basic dynamical equation of quantum mechanics which generalizes Newton's second law. However, unlike Newton's second law, which has two times derivatives, this equation is linear in the time derivative. It means that the knowledge of wave function at time t equal to zero is enough to completely determine the final wave function psi t at a later time t.